Eduardo said, I will present this paper. It is called the Special Unitary Group, Mountain Metrics and Gradient Vector Fields, with subtitle and intertwined tail. And my job now is to convince you that it is indeed an intertwined tail. And maybe also that it is interesting. Uh, this is a work I carried out at Max Planck Institute for Mathematics and Science in Leipzig, Germany, together with a <coughs> close friend and colleague. It's not for Okay, okay. <laughs> that is uh, Florio Chaglia, uh, that used to work at Max Planck too, but now is in Madrid, uh, the Universidad Carlos III. Okay, so let me start with uh, the structure of this talk. I will uh, need to introduce some structures. Uh, the set of the scene, of course, is the, state of, is the space of quantum states. I need to introduce this space and introduce some characters that play this tale. And then we will make an observation, a particular observation that will, uh, uh, from, from which will stem a more general observation and formulate a general problem to which we will give a particular solution in the case of the complete. So this is the general idea. So let me start with the definition of the space of quantum states. Uh, I will keep things simple and keep things finite dimensional. So we'll just talk about matrices. For us, a state is a matrix. And you know uh, that uh, on the space of matrices and on the algebra, uh, actually of matrices, we can define an involution. And which has two eigenspaces, so we can distinguish self-adjoint and skew-adjoint uh, matrices. And the quantum state is a self-adjoint matrix. In particular, it's also non-negative, and the sum of its eigenvalues or its traits is equal to one. This is called the state. And uh, I call this state. I'm sorry. I call this space of quantum states S n bar because it is a closed space and is indeed the closure of another relevant space. And this is what I will discuss now. We have a theorem that uh, says that uh, the space of quantum states is not a manifold, but is indeed this joint union of uh, different smooth and connected manifold, which are uh, called strata and which are basically all the states that share the same rank. So even if the whole space of quantum states is not a manifold, if we fix the rank, we are in a smooth and connected manifold. And in particular, the one with maximal rank, so the one of, uh, if I call n, the, um, the dimension of the quantum system, then rank and uh, density matrices lie all in the boundary. And this is, a, I'm sorry, lie all in the interior of the space of quantum states. So I will always um, restrict myself to the interior of the space of quantum states, that is to say, the state of maximal rank states. Okay, let me make a little example to make things clear. And the qubit, of course, it's the simplest quantum system from an information point of view. Uh, you only have two levels. Everybody knows what is written in four. We basically can write um, a quantum state using uh, poly matrices, as you see, and taking this coordinate xj, then I can take it. I can take this coordinate seriously and pretend that I'm in a uh, in R3 and also put spherical coordinates. And then I uh, discover that if I do this, then uh, the space of quantum states is in a one-to-one -one correspondence with the points of a, of a ball in, the, uh, in R3. Is, it, is this a question? It's not the simplest one. The simplest one just to take your real only matrices. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, the simplest complex one. The simplest complex one, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, S2, uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, the space of quantum states for the qubit uh, can be seen as an open ball of previous one in R3. This is what I wanted to say, um, uh, at least for the uh, for the faithful states, it's rank two states, while the pure states lay on the boundary. And as I said, we will mainly uh, focus ourselves on the interior in this talk. So now we'll introduce the characters of this uh, of this tale, and uh, I apologize at the first sight they might seem a little bit unrelated, but if you bear with me, I hope that by the end uh, everything will be clear. I will define an action of the special linear group on the on the space of quantum states, the one you see in six. This is the one everybody is uh, accustomed to. Uh, this is the adjoint union. Uh, as you see, G rho G dagger, but this is normalized, of course, because if you take special linear 
especially in a group, then the unit, the, the fact that the trace is still one is not uh, automatic. So you need to uh, fix this with the denominator. And of course, this action that I call alpha, if you restrict it to special unitary elements, uh, then you get exactly the action alpha tilde that, you, that I wrote in eight, that is the uh, most used actually in quantum mechanics. And having talked about group action, I can consider also the infinitesimal version of group action that means the fundamental vector fields, the algebra of the fundamental vector fields of the, Lie, of the action of the Lie group. And how do we do this? Well, we consider the Lie algebra, in this case, the Lie algebra of the special linear group, which is uh, the, al the algebra of uh, traceless matrices. And then I can consider the exponential map, consider a, a curve on the Lie group, and consider the action of this curve on the space of quantum states. And this is how I compute the fundamental vector field. This is what you see in line. The relevant thing here is that uh, when I write uh, the exponential map, I use the fact that uh, traceless complex matrices, I can write it by combining a self-adjoint matrix and a, and a skewer joint matrix that I called A and IB. Okay, and then I see that the fundamental vector fields, you see them in 10, uh, decompose in this way, simply because some depend on A and some depend on B. This is just a trivial observation. And then I can consider uh, now the fundamental vector fields of the action alpha tilde instead of alpha. And what I get, of course, is a subalgebra of this, and I get only the X vector fields. Okay, so this is... Uh, the picture. We have the vector fields that we call X from now on. There are the fundamental vector fields of alpha tilde and of alpha. They uh, are fundamental vector fields for both action, while the Y are fundamental vector fields of alpha and not of alpha tilde. Okay, then I need to introduce information metrics. And, um, you know, in quantum information geometry, uh, we basically uh, don't have chance of theorem. Uh, you know that in classical information geometry, we have chance of theorem that states the unicity of the relevant uh, metric or the relevant information metric. While this is not the case for the quantum information case or the quantum information geometry, when you impose the invariance under completely positive and trace preserving maps, this is not enough to specify uniquely the, the quantum metric. So we don't have a unique choice, but we have a characterization. A characterization that is being given by PETS uh, that says that. Uh, to which monotone metric is uh, the monotone metrics on the space of quantum states are in a one to one correspondence with operator monotone functions. Mm -hmm. The operator monotone functions then moreover satisfy the two uh, properties that you see here in the slide. So, being the action of the unitary group on the space of quantum state, a completely positive trace preserving map from the space of quantum states into itself, then this means that. The, um, the unitary action, the action of the unitary group that I showed you, alpha tilde, is a symmetry for all, uh, for all quantum metrics. So this means in particular that all fundamental vector fields, uh, the all the vector fields the X B, the fundamental vector fields of alpha tilde are killing vector fields for all information metrics. So this qualifies um, the unitary group, uh, the special unitary group as a universal symmetry in quantum information geometry. And now comes the observation that I was talking about. Let us specify a particular metric, in particular, Bure strong metric. I said that with PETS characterization, I can associate to each metric a function and vice versa, uh, an operator monotone function and vice versa. So uh, if I specify the function ft1 plus t divided by two, this is uh, this uh, individuates in a unique fashion, Bure strong metric. Then I can define expectation value function as customary in physics. And it is possible to prove that if I take the gradient vector fields of expectation value function with respect to Bure strong metric, then these fundamental vector fields are exactly the vector field that I before called Y. So if you would see this thing the other way around, we can realize the Lie algebra of the fundamental vector fields of alpha as the fundamental vector fields of alpha tilde, which, as I said, is a subalgebra by force together with the gradient vector fields of expectation value function with respect to Bure strong metric, of course. Okay, I keep with the standard Lie bracket, the standard geometrical Lie bracket between vector fields. Okay, so now the question is, how general is this instance? So if I have a monotone metric on the space of quantum states and I compute the gradient vector fields of expectation value function and I collect them and I add them to the vector fields of the special unitary group. Do I obtain a Lie algebra? 
if, the, if I obtain a Lie algebra, this Lie algebra is the Lie algebra of fundamental vector fields of some group action on the space of quantum states. So this is the inverse question that we want to ask. And we don't have a general answer. We have some, uh, some, uh, some general features that, the, that this algebra must fulfill. As I already said, by force, just by counting, this must be isomorphic as a vector space to V0 plus V0. Uh, I don't know if I uh, mentioned this before, but this is the space of traceless uh, self-adjoint matrices, V0. And this is, of course, by force, because we have a one-to-one -one correspondence within um, the um, exponential value function in gradient vector fields and uh, also with the Lie algebra of the unitary group. Then, of course, this must contain now, as a least subalgebra, the fundamental vector fields of the unitary group. And as you get another result that you can prove in 17 is that the, the, the commutator between X and Y must be a Y vector field again, but this is associated by the commutator. When you see the commutator with double bracket, this is a standard notation. Uh, I mean the matrix commutator. Okay. So basically, the point is that the unknown part of this algebra is just the second part, like what happened on, on the computator within gradient vector fields, because all other things are forced by the previous structure, that is the action of the unitary group, and the fact that every metric must be, um, uh, the fundamental vector fields of alpha tilde must be killing vector fields for all information metrics, and this forces you to this picture, and you have this unknown part. I stress this because this, uh, in this way, you can see this problem more as an algebraic problem of like, how can I complete an algebra, like doubling the algebra and see what kind of bracket I can put on this. So this is another way to see it. Okay, so as I said, um, now we gave a solution in the particular case for the, uh, the qubit. I will be really fast on this um, because basically it's just computation. Unit uh, 19 is the general expression that is, has been given by PETS in the particular case of the qubit. The F you see here, F1 minus R, R plus R, is exactly the operator monotone function PETS was talking about. Then, of course, we chose the poly matrices for, uh, as a basis for traceless self adjoint matrices and compute the gradient vector fields. Compute the gradient vector fields, and you get what you what we have in 20, 21, and 22. There's this uh, commutation relation where you see you have that the gradient, the, the commutator between two gradient vector fields is an X vector field, but by uh, like the the the, multi, the the structure constant, of course, is not a constant and is a function of R. So this is of course not uh, ideal if you want to construct the Lie algebra. So we need to impose that these are constant and this gives rise to an order. And this will select only the operator monotone function that will uh, that give rise to such, a, to such a, a condition. And this is an order that can be easily, easily integrated, but you need to distinguish, this, to distinguish the cases where i is bigger than zero, equal to zero or less than zero. If a is bigger than zero, we have this action as you see in 28, which is exactly the action alpha, but modified with uh, a parameter a. And of course, if you put a equal one here, you get exactly the, the observation we start from. The function becomes exactly Burestrom, Burestrom, the function that gives rise to Burestrom metric, and the action alpha becomes exactly the action of the special linear group I was talking about at the beginning. So we, of course, recover the uh, observation we started from, but we recover it as an element of a family of action. Mm -hmm. And you can generate other action. For example, if you take A equal to one fourth, you get Wigner Yana symmetric. Now, in the case where A is equal to zero, we, we get another famous uh, monotone metric, which is Bogolubov Kubomori metric. And this is also a really well-known uh, case. And it is, it is already present in the, in the literature that the gradient vector fields of this, um, associated to this metric of expectation value function are uh, the fundamental vector fields of the action you see here. Uh, but also it's pretty clear because uh, when I say A is equal to zero, I'm saying, I'm saying that the whole subalgebra is commutative. Basically, I'm saying that all, that all those commutators are equal to zero. So I'm adding a commutative algebra to, uh, to the subalgebra of the, of the special unitary group. So I will get something um, that is completely analogous to the Galilei group where I have no rotations and translations. While for the case where A is less than zero, well then, in that case, uh, we, have a, uh, a, we have that the function we obtain by solving that order 
is or that ODE is not uh, suitable because you get this function which is not even defined everywhere on the space of quantum states. So this will give rise to a metric which is not defined everywhere on the space of quantum states, which is something that we usually don't want. And so we, by this regularity conditions, we are led to exclude this case. And this basically ends my thoughts. Uh, and if I have, maybe it's better if I start, if I stop, <laughs> I will give a recap, but it's not necessary. Thank you. Uh, just a very brief question, not about the results, which look really nice, but just something about Petz's theorem. Um, did you say something like Petz's theorem says there's a one to one correspondence between monotone functions and the classification of quantum metrics? What was the relationship between monotone functions and the classification of metrics in the quantum? Okay, system? this is a theorem uh, by Petz. I, I hope to give you the, the right uh, reference. It's probably. But is that the statement? Yeah. Is the statement there is a one to one correspondence between. Not between any operator monoton function. Okay. They need to satisfy some additional properties. Okay. But yes, to every operator monoton function, you can associate a, a monoton metric. Yeah, I would like to like um, really give you the, 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 the paper. Maybe we can talk about it later. But it's uh, something that Pets uh, discovered, yeah. Any more questions? Uh, Roger Bayan has proposed uh, quantum Fisher metric. It's uh, very simple because it's a uh, question of the fundamental entropy. And uh, how do you position this metric of Bayan in your. In your uh, Okay. Uh, I, yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay. Ro Roger Bayan metric, what he called uh, quantum Fisher metric. I am not sure that I recall this perfectly, but if I uh, recall this good, is what other authors sometimes call Bogolubov Kubomori metric. So this is exactly this case. Uh, I will uh, say this. I remember this, I can be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that uh, it's just a name uh, because he derived it in a slightly different way and gave it another name, but it's exactly Bogolibov Kubomori metric is another, in another form, another shape, but it's basically that. So it's exactly this case where A is equal to one. That means it's the case where the uh, subalgebra you go, <coughs> no, the, the, the vector space you go to add to the algebra of fundamental vector fields of the unitary group is a commutative one. So it's the simple-minded idea of let's have the commutative algebra and nothing, no, nobody will get hurt, of course. It will not interfere with anything else. Okay. I, I, just, yeah. I have a more, now more relevant questions. <laughs> sure, please. So um, I'm looking at some of these examples of these um, different actions on density matrices based on the special linear group. Mm -hmm. um, when you restrict to the unitary group, it seems like a lot of them become the same action. Um, and as a physicist, I would think I should only be working with the unitary actions. So what's the general idea? Why should I consider these um, more general actions on my density matrices? What synthesis should I be looking at? Okay. Uh, you know, I, I don't agree with the, the, uh, the idea of, uh, like, also the unitary group has some isotropy group. So it's not like that uh, there is not this. This also happens for the unitary group. And also, uh, this is for all action. This actually depends on which state you're acting on, like on the rank, on the kind of degeneracy, uh, the dimension of the orbit. This is the, what I'm talking about. So this is something that already changes a lot. Like, so I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't use this as a criteria for selection uh, of uh, one action instead of another. Uh, but yeah, like you, your idea is actually like uh, nonetheless uh, correct because say I, I have the, the unitary group of course is relevant in quantum mechanics because I know that the, every evolution of a closed quantum system is and uh, all the things that we know. And the point is exactly that if you consider an action that is bigger of uh, bigger in the sense that the orbits are bigger of our bigger dimension, um, then of course what you get is that. Uh, you could also consider uh, action of the, the evolution of some open system, maybe. 
Yeah, because uh, you admit that the spectrum can can change, and that is something that happens in open system. Of course, this is not enough, but it's, uh, at least there is the possibility. If you use the unitary group, there is no way you're going to describe an open system. Thank you. Okay. No, thanks to you. Okay, I think we need to advance. So thank you. Very much.